Okay, let's do this video now. Um, I made a circle and um, I'm going to do a problem first that we can't do with the math that we have so far. Um, and then I'm going to propose a problem uh, using radicals, uh, something we used to do. And I'll give you a chance to work on that. Like I said, it's uh, a week of uh, enrichment, so they say. Okay, so here we go. And uh, some of you, at least, might be asking, well, okay, you did a hexagon, and I recall that you did a square. Uh, why aren't you doing other uh, objects and inscribing them in circles? What's the problem? Well, let's think of something the easiest we could ever think of. Here's my center of this new circle, and I want to make an equilateral triangle and inscribe it inside the circle. So uh, let's see, 360 degrees is the circle. Um, there are three points or three sides of an equilateral triangle. So I come up with 120 degrees. I take out my protractor. There I pick any point to be the starting point. And there we go, there's 120. 120 plus 120 is 240, it looks something like that. And then I connect yet again like I did before. And there we go. That was easy. I, I inscribed a uh, equilateral triangle inside a circle. And of course, the same question is asked. Obviously, it will occupy less, uh, less percent of space. That's pretty obvious to anybody. But um, hmm. let's take a look at what happens here. Let's draw the spokes again. Here we go with the spokes. And we know the central angle. Sorry about the art there. I'll fix that up just a little bit so it doesn't look bad. Ugly. And there we go. Uh, there we go. That looks good. And of course, since we uh, rotated by 120, the central angle is 120. And since it's a um, uh, isosceles triangle, oh, what's going to happen here? Um, this is going to be 30. And this is going to be 30. And I challenge you to tell me what the area of this triangle is going to be. I'll extract it like I did the other one. And there I'm going to draw it a little bit like it came out. And there we go. That's 120, agree? This is 1 and this is 1. Well, it's pretty obvious that this isn't 1. And when I drop a perpendicular bisector down and make a right triangle, I have a problem on my hands. I want you to think about that, and I'm going to explain that. Um, I'm not quite ready to do the math with you, uh, but um, uh, kind of interesting. So this is going to be 60, this is going to be 90, and this is going to be 30. Wow, that's very interesting. I just made myself, when I cut the triangle in half, a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And that will become very important down the road as you get better at math. Make that 30 a little clearer right there. Okay? Um, so you can try to solve it. Uh, I'll explain tomorrow why you can't, given the math that we know so far, can't be solving this problem, given the mathematical tools we 8th graders have at this point in time. So I want you to think about that. Um, I'm going to move on from that. Uh, but boy, I can't think of a simpler problem than to inscribe an equilateral triangle inside a circle, make it, uh, take out a piece of it, and then figure out what this triangle equals, multiply it by 3, and subtract it from pi. Can't do it with the mathematical tools we have. I'd like you to try it anyway. And um, uh, tomorrow, I'll, I'll elaborate a little bit on that and uh, introduce a new theme, which I won't start teaching just yet. Okay? So in the meantime, I'll erase all this. just following the thoughts that I had for teaching you. And um, I'm going to make a, a triangle here. Um, let's get it out. Uh, excuse me, a pentagon. But it's not a regular pentagon. That means I'm not going to um, make it with a circle. And here we go. And uh, I'll erase this. And I'll make this three units. And I'll make this two units. And I'll erase this now since it's a pentagon. Okay? And so I just constructed this. Um, we're going to call it irregular pentagon since the angles and the sides are not the same. You can just see by looking at that. 
right? And um, um, I decided when I plot this uh, triangle on top of the trapezoid, okay, I'm, I'm separating the two right there, okay? So I just sort of plopped it on top, and I decided uh, to make it an equilateral trunk, plopped on top of a uh, trapezoid, and I decided to call the bottom of the trapezoid two, and uh, then I'm going to give you a length here, and let's make sure I give you all the data. I'm notorious for messing that up sometimes. Uh, there we go. And the length, or the height of both objects, I'll put it over here so you can see it even better, is, uh, let's make sure we got this properly, no mistakes allowed, uh, 5 over 2 radical 3. That's what the length of this whole thing is here. So I want you to calculate for me, and I'll do it on the board tomorrow. I want you to calculate for me the area of this pentagon. And then I want you to calculate the perimeter of the calculus, of this pentagon. And we have the math skills to do that. Uh, you're able to do that now. And I'm just showing you all these wonderful things that radicals allow you to do. And sure, I sort of uh, put one in here, uh, sort of um, threw it in there to make the math a little easier for you. So the height of the whole pentagon is 5 times 3 over radical 2. Uh, the, um, the hypotenuse here is 3. This is 3. That makes, it the, um, that makes it the equilateral triangle. And on the trapezoid here that I put on the bottom, uh, this is 2. Uh, with this information, uh, you'll be able to figure out the area and the perimeter uh, of this pentagon. So I give you that. Uh, there's glare here. Let's see. I'm trying, going backwards. Uh, it's on this side over here, but that just says Pentagon, so it's no big deal. All right, so there's the setup of the problem. Uh, we'll let you try it, and um, eventually I'll put it into your assignments. So this just becomes regular, uh, everyday kind of stuff working with these radicals. All right, so it uh, hasn't been a long video. Uh, not much else to say. Um, I'll have another video out for you tomorrow. Okay, bye.